Hey guys, Grumpy here with episode 36, uh, the final episode of our Zerta Hero Let's Play as Mercury Guy. Uh, so this episode is going to be an epilogue, um, just going over some of the achievements that we made, um, how I would continue like the campaign if I were going to play it further, um, and then I just want to give like a thank you at the end uh, for everybody that stuck through this series. Um, <laughs> even with its eradicated upload schedule or eradicated erratic uh, upload schedule um so jumping into the episode um some of the achievements that we um went well first of all let's start with the character mercury guy the man the myth the legend uh we can change the name but why would you ever want to oh <laughs> we started as a level one um nobody with just a wolf and shepherd i believe to our name um, very quickly securing a couple of freighters so that we can have a little more cargo um, and then from there securing an LP brawler which really really let us accelerate um, our growth uh, we were able to take on some merchant convoys in the in the core worlds and if we go ahead and look at the map uh, we were able to take on some merchant convoys in the core worlds, um, really provided us the much needed supply, heavy machinery, and uh, heavy armaments that we needed uh, to sell so that we can generate the credits that we need to to, um, to grow our fleet. Um, from there, we did the main storyline, and again, I, sh I strongly recommend doing the, the main storyline first um, before you do much else in Star Sector. Just because you get access to the gates at the end of it, and the gates proved very helpful. Um, while we were in the exploration phase, we were never too um, at risk of, of um, you know, drifting away out here and not and losing like our fleet to you know not having enough supply or fuel to come back home. Um, because if you find a gate, if we go ahead and use the Intel screen. Um, if we look at gates here. If you found a gate while you're exploring, you just make a mental note of it, and as long as you're within range of the gate, then you can fly back to any gate that you find, and then pop back to the core worlds, uh, refuel, refit, and then pop back out and continue your exploration. Um, so unlocking the gates first by doing the the main storyline, very very beneficial there. Um, moving on from there, uh, one of the first major, like, boss fights that we had was fighting the Ziggurat. Uh, that was a ton of fun. Um, I wish in this game that you could redo fights, because I would love to fight that again, um, right now with the fleet that we have versus the fleet that we used, uh, in that fight. Um, the main... Uh, the main star of that fight, of course, being the Conquest. Uh, the Conquest, if we go ahead and take it out here, and we take a peek at it. Uh, the Conquest proved very, very, very beneficial in that fight. First of all, it brings two giant Hellbore cannons to the fight. Um, the Ziggurat being a phase ship. Very powerful phase ship, but a phase ship, nonetheless, uh, doesn't have any shielding. So the Hellbore is able to, you know, punch those holes into the Ziggurat. Um, means that the rest of our fleet can also uh, target it and do a significant amount of damage to it very quickly. Um, for that fight, I definitely recommend, if you are doing that fight um, yourself, I make, recommend bringing long-range beam weapons, um, things like the ion beam, even things like the long-range PD in a pinch, um, or tactical lasers, definitely. The, the long-range beam weapons, what they'll do is they'll cause the AI to freak out and they'll, they'll cause phase ships to stay in phase space rather than tank the, the low damaging beams. And as they stay in phase space, they build up more and more flux, uh, which is good for two reasons. One, it means that they can't really stay in phase space that much longer since their flux is so high. And two, uh, they can't really uh, retaliate, right? They can't really give retaliatory fire because their flux is built up so high. Um, it is soft flux, it's not hard flux, so they can't vent it, well, I mean, they can vent hard flux away, anyway. Um, but they're not at risk of, of, uh, overloading at all. Which, now that I think about it, I don't think you can overload a phase ship. 
I don't think you can overload a ship without shields. I'd have to do some experimenting. But anyway, um, yeah, so against a phase ship, against a ziggurat, I definitely recommend high explosive damage and long range beam weapons. Uh, really fun fight. Uh, so after that, uh, we fought our first remnant. That was very, re or well, before we even get to that. Uh, we start. Oh, we should probably put that conquest away. <laughs> yeah, we should probably put that up. Uh, we established our colonies. We were extremely fortunate to find the the system that we did. Um, Delta Brea proved very, very, very fruitful. Um, again, the the colonies covered a a wider range of resources, right? So we got food and organics from Cheeseburger. We have volatiles from Wraith, and then we also have uh, ores from Banshee, which admittedly right now we don't have any ores um, being mined on Banshee, but we'll talk about um, how I would redesign my colonies moving forward into the, the post end game. But yeah, being able to cover all of those resources, very good um, for us. Uh, after we established the colonies, we were able to um, establish a foothold, a foothold in this area. Um, we fought off some some pirates and some pathers, which is really nice. We demonstrated what it takes to go do that. Um, pather and pirate bases are really small, um, easy to manage. You just need a couple dominators and maybe like a legion or two to take on those kinds of fights. Um, the real threat is if you fight a pather or pirate station with other fleets nearby. Um, you do have to be aware of that. For those, I recommend bringing in smaller fleets. Try to avoid the battle station. Um, say like the the star here is the battle station. Bring in your smaller ships, but push them towards like the flank of the map, and then have them skirt around and fight off the the enemy fleet, while the rest of your capital ships hang out down here and, and fight the battle station. Um, so after colonization, we went on to our most recent round of, of combat, which was against a uh, Remnant Ordo. We fought two of them. Um, they were on the smaller size. I, I tried to look for a larger one, but I couldn't find one in that system. Um, but anyway, we fought two of those. Uh, then we fought the Remnant Nexus. Um, again, it is a battle station. So being able to overwhelm its shields and start doing direct damage to the battle station itself, not its shields, but to the actual like modules on it. Um, in the form of bringing a lot of high explosive damage to that fight, uh, as well as kinetic damage to apply, you know, kinetic pressure to those big shields, those huge shields, uh, really, really, really helped us out there. Um, and then the final fight, the fight that we just did, was the Tesseract fight. Um, so if we go back here, that's not the world's... There it is. Uh, yeah, so doing the Hypershunt fight, a lot of fun. Uh, we just... Uh, divide and conquer there, you know, allowing our monitors to tank one of the Tesseracts in the corner while the rest of our, our ships dealt with the, the the Tesseract that was down here. Once we completely eliminated it, down to fighters and all, we were able to um, drag the Tesseract back into our fleet and pretty much surround it, cut it off from escaping, and then, you know, take it out. It was a little bit of a... a, of a, a of round around but eventually we were able to 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 get the kill there uh, yeah so that's it for achievements um, again we did all that without any crazy fleets um, like I mentioned in the past I wanted I want this to be rep replicable um, at no point did I really like go heavy on s mods um, I really didn't go heavy on you know spending story points or anything like that I wanted like anyone to be able to do this uh, so that's why, you know, I stayed away from building in mods and, you know, getting like level seven officers and all that stuff. Um, I, I want this to be something that anybody can pick up and anybody can do. Uh, I don't think I went over his skills. We, we might as well look at skills while we're here just really quickly. Um, support doctrine is a it's an S tier uh, skill. I, I strongly recommend support doctrine. Um, it adds 15% combat readiness to all your unpiloted ships. It adds um, additional top speed. It adds damage reduction. I mean, just just insane to to all of your ships. 
um, not just a few of them, but to all of your ships that are unpiloted. Um, really powerful. Wouldn't be surprised if this gets nerfed moving forward, um, but a really great skill there. Uh, any other thing I want to talk about? Oh, yeah. Crew training adds additional 15% combat readiness to your fleet, which is really nice. Uh, flux regulation, I strongly recommend, again, picking. It just makes your ships more effective, um, makes them flux efficient even and as we talked about in the combat guide and also the ship designing guide um having high having really good flux management is what's going to allow you to be most effective in combat uh phase goal tuning i want to give a shout out if you have any phase ships or you plan to run a phase ship heavy fleet i this this skill is almost mandatory um it adds uh peak as uh peak performance time to your your phase ships um, and then it also adds top speed and acceleration while you're phased. So definitely, definitely, definitely recommend this. Um, if you've seen the highlights of like doom clips of like people soloing battle stations with dooms, um, this would be the equivalent to get back to like that level of power, um, pre nerf still not as good as it was pre nerf, but this will definitely, um, help you out there. Uh, next up, as far as yellow line goes, um, typically I pick industrial planning, but I was kind of hands off when it came to colonizing. Um, I just use my administrators for the most part. So by freeing up this perk of industrial planning, we were able to pick up both makeshift equipment and containment procedures. Um, so really reducing our supply and, and fuel costs, our costs overall. Uh, so really good there. And then ordnance expertise is a phenomenal perk. Not many people take this. Um, if your officers are ever presented ordnance expertise, take it um, above all else, above damage, above um, movement speed, above above anything else. Take ordnance expertise and make it elite if you can. Um, again, having excellent flux management is what's going to allow you to win more fights. Um, so elite, elite ordinance expertise is exactly what the doctor ordered. And other than that, um, nothing else pretty much that I want to talk about. Uh, okay, so with that out of the way, um, long intro, but let's talk about the colonies. What I would do to, to finish the colonies up. Uh, so cheeseburger in paradise let's talk about this really quickly uh, it produces organics and farming um the way i would develop this into the end game the post end game is for the final industry i would build commerce so um commerce being a 1.25 multiplier means that these credits per month uh we'd probably end up earning about 80,000 credits per month once we hit size six because you get plus one to all your your resources um, have, building an industry on top of that means we would produce around like one point or probably a hundred K, uh, from this one colony, if not a little more, um, then beyond that, I would, uh, of course we need to fix our, our accessibility here. We're still hostile with the hedge, but I would probably spend a point on our mega port, uh, to go ahead and, and build that up, develop that. Uh, other than that, I think that's all I would do there. Uh, again, building the commerce. Next up with Wraith. Um, Wraith is quite interesting. Um, it doesn't produce that many goods. Or it doesn't produce that many credits per month. Right? Its hazard pay is high. Right now we're generating 8,000 credits a month. Uh, if we disable hazard pay, it'd be 33. Once this is colony size 6, we'd probably only end up producing like 40,000 credits. So for the final industry, I wouldn't build uh, commerce just because because it's a multiplier, you really want a good base and this doesn't really have that good of a base. Instead, what I would do is I would build refining. Um, and the reason I would build refining is because uh, we need to free up space on Banshee, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but I would I would build refining as a final industry um, again. We wouldn't be paying hazard pay anymore, so we'd probably end up making with uh, the final industry. We'd probably end up making around fifty thousand credits per month, which is respectable um, for a gas giant that doesn't have much going for it. 
Uh, and then finally, Banshee. Banshee's an absolute rock star. Um, right now, we make 37,000 credits per month. And if we disable hazard pay, it goes up to 82. Um, so at colony size 6, uh, we wouldn't be paying hazard pay anymore. This planet base would probably produce maybe like 110,000 credits. Uh, the final industry that we would build would 100% be, be commerce. Um, this would shoot our income through the roof, and I would strongly, 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 strongly recommend um, building it to capitalize on, on our credits per month. Uh, additionally, I would build... Uh, so, because we're building the refining on Wraith, uh, I would demolish this refining and instead replace it with just basic mining. And the reason for that is because currently we import the ores and the transmetonic ores. And this doesn't cost that much, right? Like our our refining industry only costs 5,000 uh, to upkeep. And that's because ores and transmetonic ores are very cheap. But just for the sake of completion, I would rather um, us produce our own ores keep everything in house so that we don't have to rely on any other faction to get the goods that we need. Uh, so this would be out, the um, the mining would be in, and then this world would be complete. Uh, I also went ahead and replaced the administrator with an alpha core. Because this planet is so profitable as is, uh, putting the alpha core here makes the most sense because we get the biggest boost out of it. Uh... Beyond that, what I would do is, uh, obviously I would colonize the final planet in our system, Delta Brea. Um, it being a no atmosphere world means that we can build it the exact same way that we build Banshee. Um, and this, we can turn this into another 100,000 uh, credit colony with little, little effort. Um, but yeah, so that's that. That's how I would continue the colonies. Um, once we establish a, a very strong uh, income uh, per month, what I would do then is I would start stealing marines. Um, so I would you know, pick up the marines, um, take those from our planets, and use them to, uh, to begin monopolization of fuel. And other industries. So if I go ahead and uh, the reason I would start with fuel and probably only dual fuel is because there's not a lot of producers of fuel, and you can very easily monopolize this market, um, which means you can uh, you end up earning a lot more credits. Like right now, we only take a third of this global market value. If we monopolize it, we would take a um, hundred percent of it so our colonies these two would go from producing about 38,000 and 17,000 to producing uh i don't know like what's half of this about like 90,000 each this would probably be like 120 this would probably be uh math is hard 60,000 so 120 and then 60,000 because they produce half as much um, but yeah, so I would monopolize this market, um, and the way to do that, obviously, is through raiding, combat, blowing up battle stations, things like that. Um, and then, of course, I would make friendly with everybody again, so that I have people to trade with. <laughs> um, but that's how, that's what I would gear the, the end game towards, um, monopolizing one market, building up a large army, and then eventually just taking over the rest of the core worlds. Um, that's where that would go. But that is the um, that is the let's play. That is everything that I would do in the post game. Um, obviously, you could also farm remnants. I guess I can put a fleet together really quick. Uh, this would be the fleet that I would use to farm remnants. So it begins with uh, the auroras. Um, I would bring two paragons. And I bring Hyperions as well as the monitors that we already have. Is there room for a Dominator in that fight? Maybe. Maybe one Dominator in the fight to to help uh, 
bully the irradiant. But this would be something like I would bring. Let's make sure we're grabbing the right crew. This would be kind of like a fleet that I would use to, to farm remnants. I wouldn't farm uh, large remnant fleets with this. Actually, no, we're missing. We're missing a lot there. Shrikes. Hmm. Uh, there's a lot missing. I would bring a lot more Auroras and a lot more uh, champions to this fight. Uh, maybe six or seven Auroras and maybe five champions. Um, in addition to the rest of the fleets here. Uh, I wouldn't bring a Dominator to the fight. Not necessary. Uh, and I would use that to farm Remnant Ordos. But anyway, um, so that is the... That is the series. Um, it's been a ton, a ton, a ton of fun recording this. Um, even with the erratic upload schedule, um, I'm just glad I saw it through to the end. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'm really excited for what comes next on this channel. Um, there will still be Star Sector guides in the works. I'm gonna move away from this planet. Uh, there will still be Star Sector guides in the works, so uh, stay tuned for those. Uh, yeah, I'll include the, the, um, the domain, the seed for this playthrough in case you guys want to play it yourselves. Um, and retroactively I'll add it to the description of all of the other, um, all the other videos so that, you know, anyone can see it moving forward. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean... I got nothing else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the journey. Um, thank you for sticking with it. Um, thank you for all the support. Uh, we're up to like 500 subscribers. I think right now, closer to 600, closing in on 600. Thank you so much. Um, other than that, Grumpy and Mercury Guy, out.